Welcome back to the Closure Cones walkthrough. We're on number 20, looking at the partition function. So you may be wondering, what is this partition function? It doesn't sound very interesting, but after we go through what the partition function can do here, I'm sure you're gonna think this is something I can use. And stick around to the end, I wanna show you a little something extra that you can do with the partition function that you might not have thought about before. I'll give you a hint, it's all about sliding windows. <laughs> Alright, well let's just get started here from the top. To split a collection you can use the partition function. So they've got it blank here, but I think we're supposed to be calling the partition function here. And we pass it the number 2, and then we pass it this sequence of 4 items, range 4 as we've learned in previous videos, just will return four values, zero, one, two, three. So with those four values, we're gonna partition it into groups of two. So you see here a list gets returned, and this list has two lists inside of it. Here's one, it has two elements in it, and the second list also has two elements in it. And I just wanna make it clear, this might be a little confusing that this number two is actually saying how many items you want in each group. It's not saying that we want two groups all together, it's how many items we want in each of the groups. And there could be any number of groups, it just depends on the size of the lazy sequence that we provide. So let's solve this one. Partition. There we go. Okay, next. But watch out if there are not enough elements to form n sequences. I think that's a typo. Uh, form sequences of n or maybe we can just say not enough elements to form the final list of size n maybe we can say that so if we call the partition function and we're saying our n is 3 we want groups of 3 and here we're passing a vector a sequence that has 5 elements in it What's going to happen? We know that the first three elements are going to be grouped together since we have those available. But what's after that? Well, <laughs> it looks like nothing's after that. We might have expected that the D and the E would be used here, but that's not the case. So this is all we got, A, B, C. Okay, now what else are we learning? You can use partition all if you want to get partitions with less than n elements. So here again we're going to call with a range of uh, five elements and we're going to split it up into partition it up into groups of three. So what are we going to get? We should get 0, 1, 2 for the first three and we are going to get the three and the four as the next. So that passes. It's not a list of three but it did the best that it could. It's going to go ahead and take this one even though it doesn't quite fill out the, the three that we requested. So let's see, next one. If you need to, you can start each sequence with an offset. So I, they call it an offset. I also call it maybe a step. So here we're calling partition with a group size of, as three. And then there's another parameter here we can specify. Uh, you can call it an offset or maybe a step and then they specify the sequence uh, that we want to partition. So here are the sequences range 13. We got 13 elements and we're going to partition it into groups of three. So here we see it partitioned out pretty well, 0, 1, 2, but then look what happened. It actually skipped over three and four and then started the next list with five, five, six, seven, and again skipping eight, nine, and then jumping to 10. So how is it doing that? Well, that's where this uh, offset value comes in. So by default, if you don't specify the offset value, it, it actually is just set to the same value as your n. So 3 in this case would be the default. And what, what you're seeing there is if 3 is the value, it's going to create the group of 3, and then it's going to step forward in the list by 3 elements so that it can start the next list with in this case it would be the value 3, 4, 5, right? But that's not the case. We're actually skipping over. We're stepping f further ahead. We're, we're stepping forward two more elements uh, to get to the 5 here. So we're going from 0 to 5. That's, that's a step of 5. 
Yeah. So we can see we're taking three, but then we're stepping forward from the zero by five steps to get to the next list. And we're taking three again from there, but we're stepping forward by five to get to the 10, 10, 11, 12. So uh, I hope that's starting to make a little sense. Okay, let's look at the next one. Consider padding the last sequence with some default values. So that final sequence might not have enough values, right? Uh, it could come up short. So what you can do is you can specify this third parameter, which is a collection of elements that you want to use to serve as padding if necessary. So in this case, we've got a range seven, we got seven elements, grouping it into uh, groups of three. And again, because we're going to specify this padding, uh, we have to specify a value for this offset or the step. So we're just using it like the default, just passing the same step value as the, the N here. And what do we get? We get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then just one with a 6, but it's got some padding in here, a hello. So it looks like that's what we want to provide here. And that passes. Now, what else? final one here, but notice that they will only pad up to the given sequence length. So here we provide a lot of padding. We could provide four elements of padding, but we only have a group size of three, so there's no way we're ever going to use up all this padding uh, in that final list. So what are we going to see? Well, again, this is just like above. We're looking at a range of seven, so we're splitting into groups of three. We're going to have a six left over by itself and then we start to, to use the padding so we're going to say this and then R and that's it that's all the padding that we used okay so we got to see a little bit about how partition function works in these few examples now one more thing I wanted to show you this is kinda of cool with a sliding window so check this out let's just look at the partition function itself really quick just to see some example so let's look at maybe a range of 13. And here, look at the partition size is 1. See how it's just taking each element from that range uh, of 13 elements and making each one into its own little list. That's kind of an interesting trick. Now, what else? What if we took a little bigger group? So this is kind of cool. We can take a look at pairs. So sometimes that's good, but a lot of times what you might want to be doing when you're going over a list is you want to look at the current value plus the previous value. So how would you do that? With a partition function, it's really easy. What you can do is just supply this step or offset value and just supply a value of one. And there you go. Look at our result. We're kind of each each of our groups here is taking a little baby step forward. Zero one, one two. So in this way, we can kind of create this sliding window where we're always looking at two elements at a time, just going through the whole list in that in that manner. And what if we wanted to do a, a larger window, like a value three? That's real easy. Just change the group size. So three, four five it's all super easy there's nothing to it so the partition function is perfect for taking a look at a sliding window all right well i hope that was a helpful introduction to the partition function at the moment this is the final video in the closure cones walkthrough so i hope you learned something and if you haven't seen the previous videos yet there's a playlist so thanks for watching and i'm sure we'll talk again soon in another video